Good morning. I'm not sure I'm comfortable with Shep looking him over my shoulder here. <laughs> he did that for a long time, and I didn't know that was going to happen today. Shep and I first met in 1959. Uh, I was appointed the new principal of the brand new uh, Valley View School, and he was appointed on the staff. We met sometime in June, I believe it was. The school was still under construction, and he wanted to size me up, I think, before he put it, made a big fuss about his transfer, because he was very comfortable at Lincoln Glen School, where he had uh, started teaching, and uh, uh, he was really looking things over, me in particular, before he continued on with making his fuss. Well, June, uh, September came, and he showed up for school, and uh, we got started, and he seemed to be very happy. And uh, not long after uh, school was in session, he came to me and said, you know, I guess I was just a little bit afraid of change. I... Um, Really like it here. This is a great community, great teaching staff, nice parents, good kids. So he was really happy, and I was happy that he was happy. And he was the only man on the staff, so um, I was pleased about that, too, because uh, if you've ever worked with um, as many as um, 40 women and no men around, it's, <clears throat> it's a little lonely. Uh, <laughs> Shep and I found ourselves in the corner talking about cars and fishing and sports and whatever on many occasions. But um, as time went on that year, Shep established himself uh, uh, quite a reputation as the teacher that has been described here already. And <clears throat> the kids really uh, liked him. And spring came and my phone began to ring. And it was parents who said, how do I get my kid in Shep's class, Mr. Shepherd's class? And students would stop me on the playground and say, can I be in Mr. Shepherd's class next year? So that went on for 10 years. And when we were a school of 1,000 students, um, there were a lot of kids asking to be in his class. That all happened... 50 years ago, 50 years ago. About six weeks ago, I was uh, at a gathering similar to this one, and I uh, met a young man, 55-year-old graduate of Valley View School, who was a prominent doctor now in Northern California. And uh, we were remembering about days in, at Valley View School, reminiscing about what, what a good place it was to grow up. He mentioned what a great education he got there. And he said, I only had one regret, that I didn't uh, get Mr. Shepherd for sixth grade. Well, that was <laughs> 50 years later, I'm still hearing about wanting to be in Shep's class. <laughs> I didn't think much of I thought, well, I thought, you know, that was a nice compliment to Shep. Um, and I didn't think much more about it till after I uh, learned of Shep's passing. And then I reflected on that, and I, I thought about teachers in general, and Shep in particular, about how, how they influence people and, they, and, and never know how. And students are influenced by teachers, and they never know how. But here was a young man who um, all those years had, you know, wished that he had been in a class. But more than that, um, you know, teachers impart perhaps a good work habit, perhaps um, a change of attitude about something, or maybe just information that's useful. And that's all absorbed in their education kids' education, and they don't really credit anyone in particular for it, but it's there. And then I, think, I got to thinking about how many kids Shep had influenced in his 40 years. Now, if you go back to the days when there were 40-plus kids in a classroom, 
and that's the way it was when we opened that school. Um, there was well over a thousand students, well over a thousand students that had passed through his classes over the years. And so there are all those people <clears throat> that, um, you know, have been influenced by something that Chef imparted to them. And perhaps um, there's a little bit of him in all of those people. They don't know it, but there is. And that speaks for all teachers as well. I don't know what his secret was, but I know that he made kids feel good about themselves and that he punished kids in private. He praised them publicly, and um, they did feel good about themselves. And I feel real good about knowing Shep. Thank you. My name is Linda Chica. My maiden name was Linda Garcia. I was, as I realize now, even extra fortunate to have been in Mr. Shepard's sixth grade class. Um, I am one who knows and appreciates what Mr. Shepard did for me as a student. I was 11 years old, my first year here in California, moving from Detroit, Michigan. I don't mean to get a little emotional, it's just that Mr. Shepard was so kind to me, being in a new place, new people, um, children aren't always kind. I was from Detroit, the Motor City, Motor, you know, uh, place of soul. I spoke different, had a different slang. Everyone here was saying far out and groovy, and I was saying cool and that's bad. And people didn't, you know, understand that, the, the children. But Mr. Shepard, I was just so grateful to be in his class. He was my first teacher here. I met my first best friend here. We're still friends today. I'm 52, so that was quite a while ago. But to hear today that you were saying that some people, parents asked to be in the class, um, and I just got lucky. My, my mom's sister moved here the previous year from Michigan. It was a time of um, un, really just a lot of race riots and different things in Detroit, Michigan. My parents wanted better for us, and so my aunt said, hey, it's great out here in California. There's lots of jobs, come on out. You know, we'll, um, so my mom came out with us first, and we stayed with my aunt, started school at Valley View, and I was fortunate to have Mr. Shepard. And, um, but because we were a bit trouble with money, I was um, on the free lunch program, and one of the things that I just remember Mr. Shepard was so kind to understand how it would be kind of embarrassing to get that free lunch ticket in front of everybody. So he, the first day I was in his class, he asked me to stay in at recess. And so I was very nervous. Oh no, what did I do? So I go up to his desk and all the kids had gone out and he said, I just wanted to let you know, Linda, that I see that I'm gonna put your little lunch ticket here and whenever you're you know, want to pick it up before you go out to lunch at recess or at lunch, just it'll be on my desk right here every day for you to pick up. And I just thought how kind and how perceptive he was for me to know that I would be embarrassed that other kids would know that I had to not have a, uh, that I couldn't pay for my lunch. The other thing that, that stands out, there were so many things, but the other thing that stood out primarily too as well is another time during the year, I, um, he, he called me up to his, asked me to stay in again at recess, got up to his desk, and he said, I noticed that you have quite a boo-boo on your lip. He said, and I, I was at the drugstore yesterday, and I just thought that maybe I should maybe pick up a little medicine for you. And so he, you know, teachers couldn't do that today. You know, they'd get in trouble if they did that, but he bought a bottle of Campo Phenique and said it was my bottle for me, and he gave it to me, showed me how to put it on my lip. And I just thought that was the most kind thing. In his class, you felt seen and heard, and of, of, uh, he cared about you, he cared about you. It was a, he was so compassionate, so loving. And every one of his children, he just totally, you knew that he, he could see you and what you were feeling. And it's so funny because I've been telling people that story all my life, but I've also recently been telling it since I learned of his passing, and I just got another cold sore. 
And, <laughs> and I really believe that's from the power of thought, and, he's, and it's in honor of your father and your husband because of his kindness. So there are many, my friend included, Kathy couldn't make it today, but she just wanted you to know that she deeply was also so much that your father had given to her as well. So he, he is, I'm sure I speak for many people who aren't here, that he made a huge difference in the lives of many people. And we're paying it forward with his kindness. You know, so thank you very much, and, and he'll be very missed, but he will not be forgotten. I'm Tony Yamamoto. My maiden name was Tony Gavea. And I was one of the kids that would tug on Mr. Mansfield's jacket, saying, please, can I have Mr. Shepard? And I just knew that I was going to get him because I had good luck. However, that the summer before we were going to sixth grade, Mr. Shepard talked sixth grade when I was there, they changed the boundaries of our school. And I was one of the kids that got transferred to Schallenberger. It was like, oh my gosh, how could they do that my sixth grade year? I was fine because a whole neighborhood of us were getting transferred. So you know, we had a lot of friends going to Schallenberger. But it dawned on me one day that I wasn't going to be able to get Mr. Shepard, and I was devastated. So back, fast forward 30 years later, my husband and I buy a house in Saratoga, and we're coming around the corner with our moving truck. There's Mr. Shepard, and he's in the tree. And he's working on his oranges, which were his beloved oranges. And I come around the corner, I'm like, Gary, stop the car. That's Mr. Shepard. And he's like, huh? And I said, no, you don't understand. This is the best teacher ever. Even though, Mr. Mansfield, I didn't get to have him. So fast forward a few more years, I get the pleasure of knowing the Shepherd family personally and getting to know his daughter, Lynette. And our kids started playing together. And my daughter, Jenna, would play with Chris Lynn and Jackson with Austin and Miles. And Shep would continue to spread his magic in our court. And come to find out my father and mother had gone to school with Shep. So now that my father would come over to visit us, except he'd be over their house. I'm like, where's dad? He's over at Shep's. He's probably in the tree with Shep. And sure enough, they'd be up there pruning something. And so I wanted to say that even though my friends got Mr. Shepherd as a teacher, I got to live in his court. So like, I totally got them back. And he enhanced our lives for many, many years with the rest of his family. And sadly, last year I lost my father, but I know that he's up there having a blast and sharing his magic with Mr. Shepherd.